Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Recently on my channel I've been doing a lot of coverage of Age of Sigma, in particular the new Soul Wars box set. So um, today I'm going to do something completely different. I'm going to look at... Oh. Y yeah, I'm, I'm going to look at the, the city board pack for Warhammer Underworld's Shades Bar. Um, or, or, or to give it its full name... Uh, Warhammer TM Underworld's Shadespire TM Shattered City board pack. Um, so, so yeah, it's it's another sort of Age of Sigmar type product, but but it's you know for a different game system, so it's it's completely different, completely different. Right. Ah, uh, yeah. When Games Workshop announced that they were doing a uh, a board pack for um for Shadespire, um, very exciting. Um, I was very excited about it. Um, because. It's one of the things that, that the game has needed. Um, it, uh, the uh, the base set has two double-sided boards in it, which is enough for a two-player game. But if you want to play a three-player game or a four-player game, you need additional boards because every player needs their own board. So, um, so when they announced that there was going to be a board pack, I was very excited. And then I found out some details about the board pack and I was considerably less excited. But I'm a sucker for Shades Bar stuff, and um, I wanted to do some content on it, so I bought it anyway. And it's arrived. It arrived today. And um, and the first thing you will notice is that it's in a really groovy plastic clam pack, which pops open at the top here. And I'm going to take it out now because it is glaring all over the place. But um, yeah, I was expecting just like a shrink-wrapped pack, to be honest. Um, so that's quite nice that it came in a clam pack like that. Um, and here it is. Here it is. Not here. They are. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that in a moment. Now, I'll be honest. Um, yeah, I, w I wasn't. Uh, once I found out some details about the Shattered City board pack, I wasn't overly enthused with it. Um, but but I but I did buy it anyway. Um, knowing that I was going to be slightly disappointed with it. So um, uh, that might seem a little bit disingenuous that I bought something knowing that I'd be disappointed with it. Um, but it it was something that I, I, I felt I needed to purchase. We'll get into that in a moment. But anyway, um, it's a single board. Um, this is a pack which comprises a single board and and a little leaflet which has got the instructions on. We'll look at the instructions in a moment. So yeah, it's a single board, and this was fifteen pounds. Fifteen pounds, one five pounds. I paid twelve pounds online because I've got the discount. But even at twelve pounds, that's a lot for a single shade spa board. It's double sided, and it's it's beautiful because the shade spa boards have really beautiful artwork on them. But it is a single board for 15 pounds which seems it seems excessive um i would have expected two boards for 15 pounds um but that's just me um maybe may, i don't know maybe other people think that that's a reasonable amount i think that is pushing pushing the boundaries somewhat um shades bar has been very very good up until now of offering really really good value for money um the expansion packs you get really beautiful push fit miniatures and you get a big wedge of cards to use with them and i think they're like 17 pounds 50 a pack and you can get them for less online um in the base sets really good value e everything has always been really good value with shades bar except for this um which is a bit of a disappointment because this is one of the things that uh people have really been waiting for it's been one of those one of those things that people have really been waiting for two boards would have been great but anyway so it is a single board and that's just something you have to have to deal with um and it's really nice it looks great um let's compare it to one of the boards from the base game right it's pretty much exactly the same quality you know it's the same thickness um, it's the same size, it all lines up right. Um, one side has got, um, let's show you this side first. 
one side's got the uh, the covering wraps around the edge. Sorry, I've just whacked my camera. Uh, the covering wraps around the edge, and the other side, you get the, you get the visible seam where they've stuck this picture over the top. So there's the little seam running all the way along there, which probably isn't going to come out on camera at all. Um, but that's exactly the same as on the base game boards. There's a seam running along there. Um, and yeah, it's it's another board. Uh, having an extra board means you can have an extra player. And it also means you have more variety in your environments, which is good as well. Um, and this board does something new. It introduces lethal hexes. Um, lethal hexes, there's one here. It's surrounded by red, and there's one here, surrounded by red, and uh, on the reverse. Oh, they're very difficult for me to see. Um, I'm not good with colour recognition, and this board is quite a busy board, um, and those are not as obvious as I would like them to be. But that's one, and that's one. Uh, that board's a little bit... There's a little bit too much going on there for me. I mean, it looks nice, but yeah, those those hexes aren't really leaping out uh, as being being obvious. Um, no uh, barriers or anything on this side. On this side, there are two two pillars blocking blocking movement, etc. Um, so yeah, so what are my issues with? with this product um one is obviously the price um it's a little steep for one board and the second problem is intrinsically linked with that first one um it's a single board um i, I think it really needs to have two boards in because um i think four player games uh i think people were really wanting to get some four player games going on with with different maps rather than buying a second core set which is the only way the was the only other way to get two boards so i think people were expecting the map pack to have two boards in i think people are going to be somewhat disappointed that they're not getting their two boards as long as you're aware of the fact before you buy um i don't think it's, it's that's not the end of the world um and and of course um you can do three player games um the third issue is the lethal hexes i'm not a fan of that concept we shall have a look at the rules for it. Lethal hexes. Some hexes have a red border. These hexes are called lethal hexes and they contain a hazard that can wound or even kill a fighter. When a fighter moves, is pushed or driven back into a lethal hex, the fighter suffers one damage. If they were pushed into that hex during an attack action, the damage from the lethal hex is considered to be separate to the damage caused by the attack action. A fighter that is standing in a lethal hex can remain standing in it with no further penalty and can move out of it or be pushed out of it without further penalty from that hex. That's the full um, rules there for that. Um, I think it kind of... It adds, it adds an interesting element to Shades Bar that wasn't there before, um, which is a, a static spaces on the board that you can use to your advantage to create injuries, not just for your opponent, but for you as well. Um, for example, the Oryx, um, they inspire when they take damage. So you can just move an Oryx through one of these spaces now and instantly inspire. It makes, it makes it easier for the Oryx to, to, to inspire. Um, and, and there's things like that. Um, it, it it creates other ways that you can injure injure people, which is which is interesting, I suppose. But um, it's it's unblockable damage as well, so it kind of feels like it might be unbalanced. I'm not saying it is unbalancing because I haven't played on it yet and I haven't crunched numbers and things like that. So I'm not going to sit here and say this is broken and this should never have been allowed to happen because I don't do that and I don't use the broken word. Apart from when I just use the broken word to say that I don't use the broken word. But other than that, I don't use the broken word. Because the broken word is broken. Anyway, I think because it's unblockable damage, um, it might put smaller teams of like storm cast that have the high the high damage absorption it might put them at a slight disadvantage because it creates other opportunities for your opponent to injure you which weren't there before um and shade spar has always been a very tight game in terms of um 
the, the options that you have available um, is all, everything is has to be so exact and your choices have to be so perfect all of the time um, and now it kind of seems to have opened up another set of options that um, new options for injuring people new options for inspiring new options that perhaps um, loosen things up a little bit um, I'm not sure I'm not sure how much tournament action these boards are going to get. Um, I just feel, I don't know. I feel like it's an interesting concept and it's something that you, for casual games, you can just sort of go, hey, let's play with the play with the, the, the boards that cause damage. Um, and I think it's going to be interesting from time to time, but I can't see myself using this board with any great regularity just because... I think it, it's throwing a spanner into the world, and, and I guess that's that's good in its own way. It's something new to think about. It's something, and, and you know, you're going to fall on one side of the line or the other. And I'm not going to say, I'm not going to outright say it was a bad idea to do it. I'm sure some people are going to love this idea, um, but for me personally, I I find Shade Spa is it's such an exacting game, and it it punishes you for a bad mistake, and you, you have to try so hard to get the most out of your activations and now it's creating other ways to do things and uh, it feels like it might make things a little bit more forgiving and also might unbalance things like i say a certain to a certain degree towards uh units that have that high the high protection suddenly they're 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 in the positions where you only have to push them a space and, and they're going to start taking damage the other thing um is that the rules don't state clearly what happens in terms of glory um we know in a two-player game that if a, a, a unit is removed from the board then your opponent gets a glory that's 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 fine but in three and four player games um it creates additional um it's it's, it's instantly generated a, an, an faq as far as i'm concerned because um I guess if you move one of your own units into a space and kills, uh, nobody will get the glory. Um, but if your opponent makes, if one of your opponents makes you move into one of those spaces, I guess you have to assume that they get the glory, even though the damage from the um, lethal space is separate to the damage from any attack action caused. But I mean, if you push your opponent into one of those spaces and he dies, you have to assume that you're going to get the glory in that case. Um, it's you know it's 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 a minor thing but it should it should have been clarified in the rules um you know there's there's only a paragraph of rules it wouldn't have hurt them just to have that clarification in there that says if this happens this happens if this you know it, it's it's a minor thing but it should have been there um but other than that i mean it's it's cool to have variety it's cool to have to have some differences um like I say, um, it, it's a product that I bought knowing that I wasn't going to love it, but I'm just desperate to have alternative options. Um, I know that somewhere down the line there's going to be um, uh, a second wave of Shades by stuff, and one has to assume there's going to be a, a second wave core box which will have two boards in it, and um, and perhaps it would have been would have been advisable for me to wait and just see what was happening but um but you know it's not in my nature <laughs> it's not in my nature to do that and um like i say it's, it's a very nice looking board um it is of exactly the same sort of quality as as what you you know from the base game it's it's pretty it's you know it, it obviously the other thing it does um it gives you um it moves around starting spaces um so that's another th another thing that gives you variable options um interestingly on this side of the board there's two starting locations right next to to damage locations so again if you're playing like the oryx then you know you're gonna you set up here and here and and your your very first move or push or whatever is is inspiring you so so yeah i mean <sighs> I, I, it, give, it gives you a lot of things to think about. It gives you new things to think about, and that's never a bad thing. Um, but I just think that it's going to be more of a novelty than um, than something that I, I regularly turn to for for actual using in games. A pretty expensive novelty. 
Um, but I guess that's all I have to say about it. It's a piece of cardboard at the end of the day. Um, is it worth the money? That's that's a judgment call. I'm, I, I probably feel like I I paid too much for what I'm going to get out of it. But I think some people will, will use it all the time. And some people... I mean, it opens up options for, for having multiplayer games. And, and, you know, options are options. And I've got to love me some Shade Spire anyway. So um, so that's it from me. That's all I have to say about this. Um, and I still managed to say a heck of a, a heck of a lot of... Um, I need to figure out how I can do these videos and not talk for quite so long. Um, but there we go. That's it from me for now. Um, and that is the Warhammer TM Underworlds Shade Spire TM Shattered City Board Pack. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.